My name is Andy, and today I'm gonna to show you how to dig up steamers using a toilet plunger. What we have here is a soft shell clam. Most people refer to these as steamers. Uh, they're also called Ipswich clams. I like to call them piss clams because sometimes you take them out of the water and they little squirt of water comes flying out. Uh, whatever you want to call them, these things are absolutely delicious. Uh, you steam these up, a little melted butter, a little hot broth. It's a little slice of heaven. So let's get started. So the first step is we got to find where the clams are living in the mud. And they hide pretty good, but they do leave a little telltale sign that there's clams lurking below. So as you look at the bottom here, you can see these little dimples. There's about a dozen or so in this little circle here. And those are probably steamers. They could be cohogs. They could be worms, but that's what we're looking for is little holes, dimples on the bottom in the sand. So what we want to do is find a good sized colony where there's a lot of these holes clustered really close together. All right, so this spot right here looks about as good as any. We got lots of holes, lots of dimples in the bottom. Time to start plunging. So aside from a toilet plunger, there's a couple other things you're gonna need to do this. One is a recreational shell fishing permit. Um, in Massachusetts, these go state, uh, town by town. Rhode Island, it's a state license. You are not covered with your regular fishing license. You need a separate shell fishing permit. And you're also gonna need a shellfish engage, just like fish, there's keeper sized clams, and there's clams that are too small that we need to let go. So this tool here, we'll show you more of that later, is what we use to measure the clams. All right, so this is my plunger. As you can see, it's a regular old toilet plunger. The bigger, the better on one end. We got a six foot pole, this is aluminum. And then we have a basket on this side. So it's a very shallow. It's got wire in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the plunger to work the bottom. We're gonna make a crater. And as we get down deeper, we're gonna turn this around and sift through the debris and get some clams. So when you're first starting out, it's gonna take you a while to get down to where the clams are. Steamers are gonna live about 10 to 12 inches down below the bottom. So it could take you a good four or five minutes initially just to get the debris blown out, to get a whole, good hole started, and to get down into the zone. Now, if you wanna dig up a clam, you gotta kinda of think like a clam. And right now, you're probably wondering what a clam thinks about, and the answer to that is absolutely nothing. So we just wanna plunge, 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 plunge. Sift, sift, sift. And there you have it, our first steamer. Now I kind of mashed this one up a little bit. I broke the shell on it. Um, as we get down into the zone where we're finding steamers, you want to back off a little bit, go be a little more gentle. Um, you don't want to hit the bottom with the plunger. You want to bring it just about to where the bottom is. That'll blow the sand out and it won't crush the clams. So I'm going to give this broken one to my new best buddy here. He loves them. Oh, look what we got here. So I've been at it about four minutes now. I finally gotten down about a foot down in the hole. Got my first steamer, that's a beauty. So to measure a steamer, they need to be two inches lengthwise. So this guy is definitely legal, but just to show you, this is two inches from here to here. If the steamer fits through that, you gotta let it go. And one of the other kind of fun things that happens when you're doing this is you get some pretty weird bycatch. Hey, look at that, I don't know what kind of worm that is. I'm no marine biologist, but that thing's funky. <laughs> and we also get the regular sandworms, they're a lot more common. These you'll get maybe two, every two or three trips you'll get one of these. Looks like something out of Star Wars, look at that thing. So essentially you can dig steamers like this year round. Um, different areas open in the summer, other areas are open in the winter. Right now it's just mid-February, and I actually think the steamers taste better when you get them out of the cold water in the winter. And plus it's just a good way to get some exercise on a winter day. And a lot of times you'll feel one when you dislodge it from the mud. It'll kind of make a thump against the plunger, and if you do feel one, like I do right there, best to stop and flip it around. 
and scoop it right out so you don't smash it up with a plunger. Now, I don't know who the first person was to figure out that you could use a toilet plunger to dig clams, but whoever they were, they were a genius. And this definitely seems to be kind of a localized thing to Southern Cape Cod. Right now we're in Falmouth, Massachusetts. And we only get about a foot and a half a tide here. It's very mild tides. So most people traditionally will dry dig in the sand above the low tide mark to get steamers. But because we get so little tide here, most of the steamers are out past the low tide mark. And I have heard of people doing this in Rhode Island. And I know one person up in Itzwich that says they've heard about it, but never actually seen anybody doing it. But it's a pretty common practice in these parts. So that really is all there is to it. Just plunge, plunge, plunge. Scoop, scoop, scoop. Repeat. All right, now I'm gonna show you the best way to store your clams. After I go clamming, I come down here to the closest boat ramp back up. Got a cooler, we're gonna fill this up with salt water. Should be enough. I dump our clams into the salt water. And the next trick, a little good old cornmeal. I'm going to take this, just about a half a cup will do you. And dump that in there. Swirl it around. And that's really going to help the steamers spit out any sand that's stuck inside of them. So a lot of times you're eating steamers, there's always a little bit of sand. But the longer you soak them in salt water, the more they're going to be sand free. And a lot of the old timers have told me that you don't need the cornmeal, just putting them in the water and soaking them is good enough, but cornmeal's cheap, works for me, and I don't like having sand in my clams. That's a wrap.